advice. Congratulations on the film. Now, just to start, can you describe the real life events that this film is based on? Yeah, sure. So, in a, in a nutshell, um, a group of myself and a couple of boys went out for a night and um, eventuated to a one night stand. And a week later, the cops were at my door and. Uh, she had cried rape, and so uh, it was a process of losing my nursing career and awaiting trial. The trial went terribly wrong. I was found guilty and sentenced to six years, and uh, and from inside I had to obviously lodge the appeal and learn the law and fight the charges. So after 19 months of that uh, sentence, I was uh, exonerated of those charges and free to go. So yeah, that's, that's sort of in a nutshell, I guess, before I put the, the story. How old were you at the time? 26. How old are you now? Yeah, 36. While I'm sure you hope a lot of people go see the film, mm. I get the sense that that matters less to you than the fact that you have a filmed record of your experience. Is that true? Possibly. There's elements there, Jim, of that as well. Um, but my reason for putting the story was to help people uh, with whatever they're going through. You know, if I can uh, encourage people to leave the cinema and it's just given them a bit more... Uh, encouragement to, to whatever they're going through and, and be uplifted from the experience of telling my story, then I've done my job as a storyteller. So I think that's probably early on more of what I wanted to do, my passion more about sort of just documenting what happened. Well, you actually want the film to be positively inspiring to people mm -hmm. who feel that all the odds yeah. are stacked against them. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's bang on, actually. That's exactly yeah, that's pretty much it. I've lost, um, I lost a, a few mates to suicide and, and those sorts of things, and um, I, I've been to that dark place, and yeah, as we know, it's, it's out there all the time. So, yeah. How do you do it? How do you pull yourself through yeah. a dark place like that? In the film, mm -hmm. it's just shown through grit and determination and just belief in justice and belief in the truth. Sure. But, Mac... Martin, is that enough? Well, you got to search pretty deep. You, you know, you go to some dark places. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to have some some uh, positive characters in there, like uh, who Martin plays Jimmy Cove, and you know, he watched my back, and uh, you know, he his character helped me helped me through some really dark times. He knew that I was innocent. You know, he know he knew the system very well. He was an armed robber and done time in every state in Australia, and. Um, yeah, he, he just looked out for me like a little brother, I guess, or almost like a father-son type thing. Yeah. You also have religious icons peppered throughout the film. Mm. There seems to be a religious theme in the film. I'd probably uh, more uh, pen that as probably more spiritual thing. Uh, a lot of guys inside um, do clutch at whatever they can in that environment. So, And I wanted to really um, bring that out because it's quite a, a, a sort of an important thing for a lot of the guys in there and it was something that I was exposed to in that environment. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why a film? Why didn't you write a book or an article yeah. or get a current affair to tell your story? Yeah. Why film rather than a book or, yeah. or a poem or yeah. whatever? I, I mean, I watched Shawshank Redemption and was moved by it. When I watched that and I sort of, there were parallels with my story and I think I was like, well, there's some similar elements here, and I, you know, I wasn't unfamiliar with the entertainment industry, and you know, I'd done, done some acting in myself, and and then once I'd met Martin and sort of said, this is my story, and, and he was on board, and that sort of propelled me to realise that I had something more than just a story. You wrote the film and you directed it as well. Would it not have been a better idea, having written the film, to give it to a director? To give it to someone who yeah. had more experience. Yeah, it's it's hard. You know, I, I had such a, a a certain vision where I wanted to go, and it's a whole process of slowly letting go to someone else. And I realised that um, I had met some directors, and I'd written to Rob Sitch inside, and and he made it appear possible for me when he wrote a letter back to me in my cell, and I read it, and I said, I can do this. You know, I mean, I wasn't, you know, I was a nurse. I was, um, had a profession and, and, I, and I knew I, there was a lot of skill sets there that I had to, to do a lot of it. And I, it's, I guess it's the proof in the pudding that, to be able to get to where I am. Mm. So. And what did you think of the film when you saw it? First rough cut, you kind of like, you take out, you, you, you're stiff, you're like, uh, yeah, okay, we've got a bit of work to go. Uh, I didn't want it to look like a low budget film. And um, I wanted it to look above industry standard despite the fact that we had a low budget. 
So um, yeah, we at that first pass we took a deep breath and we said, okay, we need to find more money to take it to the post house in Brizzy and bring it up to that standard. Mm. So, yeah. What uh, role did Possible play in the making of this film? Crowdfunding is becoming a new avenue for mm. low budget films yeah. to uh, to take. Absolutely. So we had a, an initial crowdfunding campaign for our pitch trailer. Um, which went on to win the, the LA Best trailer for the Holy Shorts. And then I thought, okay, this is great, it was successful uh, pitch. Then we had a crowdfunding campaign for pre-production. And again, we sort of doubled the figure, so then we put 30000 up for that one, and, um, and that came through as well. So then that, it, it really was a springboard in the early days for us, yeah. And what about TP to production, though? Did you then get um, yeah. funding from...? Yeah, we didn't get funding from any orthodox bodies. It was all uh, private, it was all family and friends, and obviously selling off the back end. And as we got closer and closer, the risk was less, so it was easier to say, hey, you know, Dad, or hey, you know, whoever was around at the time, mm. um, to believe in the, the, the product. Just to clarify, no funding from any government body? No, correct. And how much did this film cost? <laughs> it was, uh, look, the parallel. The parallel would be, if I was to buy a bed set in Collingwood, I'd have change. We had a distributor watch this film and say, Magus, if I had have thrown two million at a production company to make this, it would have been spot the difference. I think it would have been changed from four. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, How long did it take you to make? Sorry? Uh, How long? Yep, so we had about nine months pre-production, yeah. a six-week shoot, and about three months post. It was intense. It was a... 12, 16 hour days. How did you get access to that correctional facility? Uh, that was a miracle. We, they were in between refurbishments. So we had a 600 man jail um, available for a window. How long? Three weeks. And so we, yep, it was uh, Mad Max style, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was, it was, it was uh, chuck you into the jail and then just go. You know, it really was. And, you know, it was surrounded by a lot of, there was a lot of good old boys in there, so they had some ex criminals and a few bikies and that added a nice texture and sort of gave you that, that feeling of, of what, it, what it was like. You don't need the work. You are a high profile Australian actor, Wentworth, Rake, Underbelly, Wonderland, as well as all the other stuff. Why does an actor take part in a low budget passion project that he knows is going to get probably limited exposure? Why do you do it? The work and the story. Max's story. I, I, I jumped on because I, 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 I love, well, the story I thought was intriguing, was interesting, and also the character he offered was something that is probably something I'm not offered a great deal. So I looked upon it as a major challenge, and uh, I wanted to take that challenge on board. And, and also, I love working on shoestring budgets where if, if I believe in the project, because it, for me, everyone mucks in. It's like the circus, you know, everyone turns up and, and puts their heart and soul into the product and, and to the project, and there's a lot to be said for that. You know what? Given I, your formidable experience, <laughs> you've seen a lot of good, you've seen a lot of bad. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of that? You know, I haven't seen the film in its entirety. I've seen, I mean, bits of the film in terms of the, you know, the ADR and, and working on it. And I have not seen the fully sweetened um, film. So tonight, I will sit down with a number of people <laughs> and experience it. So I, I don't know. But all I know is that uh, whatever the result is, I'm incredibly proud of both Mac and everybody who put a lot of heart and soul into it and, uh, and it was just one of those experiences that I, I was happy to do. Okay. I do want to know about the different rhythms that you picked up while you were making this film. Given that you work so much in TV, I imagine that making this was very different. I well, you're right, Jim. I mean, you know, um, schedule is everything when you're making television because you're always an hour behind. <laughs> and I know because I've had the pleasure of, of directing a little bit of telly and I've been in that position where, you know, you're always behind. Even before you start, you're behind. In fact, the first came up to me on the first day and said, we haven't shot anything, but you're behind. <laughs> and that was a big lesson that I realised that, you know, that is shooting television. With this, this is, um, I mean, the restrictions are, the, are, are similar, but but there was a lot more room to improvise, there was a lot more room to move. You know, Mac was the 
producer, the director, and the writers. So you know, the consult could happen on set um, if he felt like he wanted to shoot something. As occasionally, they had an idea of, oh, let's do something. Let's. What about trying this? And they all of a sudden, the crew would move over to the other side of the prison. We'd shoot a scene with Jimmy and Will punching a bag or looking out. You know. So there was a lot of that sort of improv- improvisation that went along that probably you can't afford on a, on, a, on a strict television or a film schedule. So I guess there was a lot more freedom to, to have a crack at different things. Now, I deliberately want to get a bit of detail on this, mm. and that is the transformation. Because if I didn't know that it was you, I would have guessed you've got some rugged ex crim who has become an actor <laughs> to play a role in this film. Martin, just firstly from you, how did you affect that transformation? Because it's almost unrecognisable as you. It's a great transformation. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I had met over the years people, you know, um, and I, hadn't, I haven't been inside jail, but I have met m- men of, of that ilk in my travels and talking to a lot of people and talking to those particular men who possibly have spent time in jail and, 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 you know, I guess that really fed my imagination and from then on I just sort of did my homework and I got a sense of who Jimmy was and, and I talked, you know, with Mac and, and I met some of Mac's um, colleagues who were, were in prison um, with him and, uh, and, and then, then the character just sort of developed, developed from there and then I just put homework in, I developed the backstory and just try and develop a sense of, you know, this is a different person to me. So, you know, and delineating between me and him and realising that, you know, this is a man that's been incarcerated pretty much all of his life and, and understanding that, that the rules are different and, and his value system, his morals are different. And, um, and so I, I embrace that. You also portray him as someone with a very thick veneer but once the main character drills through it, or once he shows him that he won't be pushed around, the human side kind of comes out a bit and he befriends him. Yeah, I think that, I think that was key for me because you just can't play a tough nut. You just can't play a, a guy being tough. I mean, all of these people have feelings and souls and, and, and hearts, and, and I think that that's in a way what Mac was trying to, to say, that the, even people in jail, you know, guilty, not guilty, whatever, they're, they're, they're people, and that... Um, you know, trying to show in this film that it's more about relationships and the relationships that you can have with people inside jail um, that help you get through. How does this performance rate with all the other stuff that you've done I, in terms of journey, in terms of changing yourself? Oh, well, the journey started when we met. We met over, we had a hamburger in Byron Bay and had a chat and, and, and that happened a few years ago and then it's, I've been much more involved just you know, very much Max pro- project, but he would, you know, like cons- consult with me if I had any ideas or thoughts, and so there was a lot of collaboration. I mean, we loved you in Underbelly, but is this the biggest transformation you've ever affected on screen? I think so. I mean, I think that it was it it was um, I, I enjoyed it a hell of a lot, and so I guess that would be true. Why? Physical change, the the, the whole the 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 oppor- good question. The, good, the opportunity to do something vastly different and um, and to live within that, that wall those walls and and, and to hopefully realize uh, um, this man and his, his journey and the friendship that develops between him and the boy and I could relate to that being a father